Lameness is a problem that all sheep producers will be only too well aware of. Conservative estimates put the cost of foot rot alone in the UK at £24 million. That's £1.50 for every ewe in your flock. There are a number of conditions that cause lameness problems and our film today, supported with our manual, will hopefully provide producers with the tools to aid their diagnosis of the problems in their flock and create strategies to deal with it. EBLEX has worked with Professor Laura Green at Warwick University on a number of lameness projects. So we'll leave Laura to take us through the diagnosis of the different conditions and explain the strategies to control lameness in your flock. We've known for many years that farmers are very concerned about lameness in sheep. It's their number one concern in terms of welfare and very important for economics as well. It really impacts on production of sheep on farms and probably second only to intestinal parasites as a concern for disease. And vets as well are very concerned about the levels of lameness that they see in sheep. So we, our work has really been looking at how we can take the best farmers in the country and what they're doing and see whether we can help to tell other farmers how these farmers are managing lameness and keeping lameness levels down. One of the things I think is very interesting, we've done some work very recently where we took a flock of sheep, a flock of 800 sheep, and we split the ewes into two groups, about 400 in each group. And for two years, we had one group where we were going in and treating sheep within three days of them becoming lame. And we were giving them an injection of antibiotic and a foot spray. And the other group were managed in a more typical way for a sheep farm. So within a week or so of becoming lame, the sheep were caught and turned. And if they had foot rot or scald, they were trimmed and sprayed, but they weren't given an injection. And over the two years, we looked at the difference in productivity between the sheep on the farm. And the sheep in the group which had got this rapid treatment were more productive. We had um, fewer barren ewes, fewer ewe and lamb deaths, larger number of lambs born per ewes put to the ram. And um, finally, overall, in terms of finishing, the, there were 18 extra lambs finished per 100 ewes put to the ram in our treatment group compared with the control group. And quite remarkably, I think, the, these lambs also finished on average six weeks earlier. So the estimated extra income to the flock was somewhere between four and six pounds per ewe in that group, whether she was lame or not. So a substantial increase in income from really keeping on top of uh, foot rot in particular. I think as far as the finishing is concerned, what, what we're seeing is that by dampening down the lameness levels in the ewes, we don't see so many lame lambs. So I think that might be part of the effect. The other big effect is that our ewes were in better body condition. Because when they became lame, they were only lame for a couple of days, they carried on eating and so they maintained condition. And of course they can then feed the lambs more. And so what we saw was those lambs were going away before weaning, um, having fed really well off their mums. And they didn't have that big check that you see at weaning. And that six weeks difference was probably, a lot of it was probably the difference between finishing off the ewe and finishing later after weaning. I think the, the initial work that we did, we were asking farmers in England and, and the rest of the UK, what, what were they doing to manage lameness in sheep? And the farmers who told us they had low levels of lameness, so we're talking about under 5% of lame sheep, were moving away from routine behaviours with the flock and moving much more towards catching and treating individual lame sheep. And that approach seems to work because we, we catch those sheep quickly and we stop them from being lame. So we have the um, improved production that I mentioned earlier. And we can also move away from some of the really unpleasant flock procedures which take a lot of effort and a lot of time. And one of the things that was really quite remarkable with that first piece of work that we did was that farmers who were doing a lot of foot trimming also told us that their levels of lameness in their flock were higher, somewhere between 10 and 15%. So there seemed to be a very unintuitive relationship between lots of flock management and high levels of lameness. And that's why that triggered our research into looking at whether by treating individuals can we um, control lameness in a much better way than if we're managing it by waiting for a certain number of sheep to be lame and then treating the flock. And our work would suggest that it's rapid treatment that keeps lameness levels down. One of the things that we've identified is that farmers can definitely spot lame sheep. There's no issue, even a very mildly lame sheep, we know that farmers can pick them out. One of the things that varies is whether farmers catch the first lame sheep that they see in a group that's very mildly lame. 
Some farmers are waiting until there are five sheep that are sort of mildly lame, or even five or ten fairly severely lame sheep. So the first thing is, catch that first mildly lame sheep, because if she's infectious, if she's got foot rot, and you treat her quickly, she won't pass the disease to other sheep, and you'll be catching fewer sheep at the end of the day. So catch the first one. Obviously then you've got to know what's going on. And one of the things we found out is that whilst farmers recognise the different foot lesions, uh, sometimes they're not using quite the right name. And that can be quite important if, if you then go out and seek advice. Um, so if you want to know how to sort out a foot rot problem in your flock, it's really important to know that you're dealing with foot rot. So turn the sheep and have a look. The six common lesions that we see are scald, which is just an inflammation of the skin between the feet. Um, very common in lambs in the springtime, this lovely nice wet spring day that you can hear behind us is a, a classic time when we would expect to see scald spreading in lambs very quickly because it seems to spread very well in warm wet weather. Um, the ewes themselves can have scald but uh, quite often they'll also have foot rot, they'll have underrunning of the horn and a very very classic nasty smell that goes with it. Uh, another really important infectious condition is contagious ovine digital dermatitis. Now, not all flocks have got this condition yet. It's, it's fairly recent. It came into the UK, we think, in about 1999. It's spreading through flocks, and uh, the first year that a flock's infected, the disease levels are really high. You can get 30, 50 percent of lame sheep. Very, very nasty disease. The whole hoof horn capsule can come away so sheep are lame for a long time and it really sets the lambs back. So those are the three infectious diseases that we uh, are, uh, see very commonly and we're quite concerned about. And then there are three which are not infectious but are still a problem and still something that we need to be aware of when we turn sheep. There's abscesses in the feet which although they're caused by bacteria they don't spread from sheep to sheep and can cause a, a nasty level of lameness because the foot's very hot, it's very full of a pus under pressure, so not surprising the sheep will be very lame when it has an abscess. Uh, toe granuloma, which is a little strawberry-like lesion that you see on the bottom of the foot. When you touch it, it bleeds very easily. Very, very painful for the sheep because that's living tissue that's come out from the horn. Uh, and the last one is shelly hoof, which is part of a white line type disease. Often doesn't cause lameness, but when it does, it will be either because mud is impacted into horn that's flaking away from the side of the wall, uh, or maybe even because foot rot's got in there and there's an infection with foot rot. So those are the six common foot lesions that we see in sheep. What we have here are some samples that have come from the abattoir. So after these sheep were dead, we've taken these feet and preserved them. And what I'd like to do is use those, these to show you different aspects of the feet. So if we start with this whole foot here, what we can see is that this sheep has a very nice sound foot and if the horn is sound, if the wall horn is joined tightly to the sole horn, then this is a very healthy foot. For this sheep, we can see that the wall horn is below the level of the sole and so when she walked she would have been bearing weight on the wall horn. This is a section through a little foot. What we see here is the sole horn, this black line at the bottom here, and this is two to three millimetres or quarter of an inch thick at most. And this horn stays this thin and so you can imagine that if when trimming we trim away and take all of the wall horn away and so the sheep is bearing weight on the sole, she's walking on very very thin spongy horn and, and that in itself will lead to bruising and will make a sheep lame. We can use this foot here, which has been sliced open after the sheep was dead, to look at the internal structure of the foot. Here we can see the sole of the foot and the wall of the foot. And inside the foot is a bone. This little triangular structure here is a bone. And between the two, in the living animal, there is living tissue, which has a, a blood supply and a nerve supply. In, in this specimen, we've taken the horn away from the bony insides of the foot. Um, just to show you how thin this sole horn is, if I hold it up, 
you can just see the light going through the bottom of the sole.